students often confuse on how to decide what types of solutions a system of linear equations can have. Either it should be one solution, infinitely many solutions, and or no solutions. And how do we know whether it has which solutions? In this lesson, I'm going to share with you two methods that can give you a prediction of the system, whether it has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions. The first method is using the degree of freedom, which is a quick prediction. And let's assign the number of unknowns as n and the number of equations as r. So remember, n represents the number of unknowns and r represents the number of equations. So the number of equations here must be independent. What does it mean by the equations must be independent? For example, let's consider these two equations, r1 and r2. So based on the inspection, I know that the second, e second equation, r2, is depending on the first one because you can express r2 equals to 2r1. So the number of independent equations for this system is actually only 1, not 2. And let's consider the first case, which is where when the number of unknowns is equivalent to number of equations. So probably we predict that the system of linear equations will have one solution. So for example, these two system, these two linear equations here. So based on its action, we know that both are independently. Both equations are independently because you can't express the first equations in the form of second and vice versa. And we have two unknowns here. So probably we will have one solution. And when you solve it, you found out that you actually have one solution that can be substituted into the equations on the right, on the left hand side to get a constant equivalent to the right hand side. For case two, if the number of equation is less than, supposedly it should be less than the number of unknowns, there is a mistake here. So probably you have infinitely many solutions or known as the underdetermined case because we have too much of unknowns, too little of equations to be used to solve the system. So it is being called as underdetermined case since not enough information or the equations to solve it. So let's consider this example. We have three unknowns here, x, y, and z, but we only have two equations. So I'm going to express the y in the form of z and substitute it into the first equation to get x, which can be expressed in the form of z. So in this case, we can't find a fixed value for x, y, z, but we know that z is the coefficient z is the parameter on the right hand side so we can assign z as the free variable which means that we can simply vary the values of z and once we know the value of z the value of x and y will be fixed so for example i'm going to tabulate the values of x y z here so let's assume that z equals to 0 z equals to 1 and z equals to 2 and correspondingly you can get the value of x and y just based on the value of z. So z is the free parameter here. And you can have a many possible outcomes. You can have this set, or this set, or this set, and so on, where when you substitute into the equations on the left-hand side, you'll get the constant equivalent to the right-hand side. So just to recap again, z is a free variable since we can assume any value for it. And x and y depends on the z value. So their values have been tied up by these two equations. And you can't simply assume any value for both. For the third case, if the number of equations is more than the number of unknowns. So another mistake here, the sign should be to the right side. So probably you have no solutions or known as over-determined case since you have too much of information which contradicts with each other. So let's look at this system of linear equations. We actually only have two unknowns but we have five equations here. So solving the first and the second equations will give us x equals to 2 and y equals to negative 1. But when you substitute these values into the third, the fourth, and the fifth equations, you will not get the values or the constant equivalent to the constant on the right-hand side. So we say that there's no solution for this case. 
So this is the method to decide or to predict whether a system of linear equations has which type of solutions based on the degree of freedom. However, the degree of freedom is just a prediction. It is not 100% accurate because if you have more unknowns and more equations, you can't decide whether the equations they are independent or not. And that's why we have the second approach here, which is the Gaussian elimination, which can give you a 100% decision or results whether the system will have one infinitely or no solutions. So you use the Gaussian elimination to reduce the augmented matrix into the row echelon or reduce row echelon form. So for the case one, maybe in the previous case you use the manual calculation to solve it, but if you use the Gaussian elimination, you actually will end up in this form. So exactly one value for x and one value for y. So we have the one solution here. So the row with the leading one indicates that that row is independent. In this case, we in this case we have two rows with leading one, which means that we have two independent equations. So we prove that the two equations considered in this case they are independent. So therefore we say that the system of linear equation has two independent equations n equals 2. The supposedly should be r equals 2. So the degree of freedom will be 0 and thus we have one solution. For the second case, which is the infinitely many solution, so we have, we will be using the similar, we will be using the similar case in cover in the degree of freedom. So here we have three columns, which means that we have three unknowns and we only have two equations. So two rows with leading one here, the first row and the second row with leading one. So we have two independent equations. So R supposedly this should be R equals to two. So the degree of freedom will be number of unknowns minus the number of equations, which is three equivalent to negative one. So this is underdetermined. Negative means that we lack of information. So negative one indicates that we lack of one more information. So we need another independent equations. Or in another word, we have one free variable here, which is corresponding to the third column, which it doesn't have any leading one. So the pivot columns corresponding to X and Y, because these two columns, they have the leading one here. So Z will be the free variable. And if that particular column does not contain leading one, the corresponding unknown will be the free variable. This is how we decide on which unknowns can be the free variable. Normally, we choose the one without the leading one as the free variable. For the last case, which is the no solutions, we'll be using the same case example as well, five solutions, but we only have two unknowns. So you can use, you can continue to reduce it into the reduced row action form. Either you stop it here. If you, if you come to this step, you found out that y equal, equals negative one, y equals negative two, y equals two over three, and so on. And we know that the y can't take up all the values because they are, there is a conflict here. You can't have a one unknown equivalent to many values. So to prove why I said so, you further reduce it until this condition and you see that you have a zero, zero here. So zero means zero x, zero y equal to zero. So for the third row is okay, it's fine because we have a logic equations here. But for the fourth and the fifth one, zero x, zero y equals to five over three, which is a illogical expression. 0x plus 0y equals to 1 of 3 for the fifth rows. So those are the illogical equations since you can't have, since the 0x and 0y should be 0. Hence, whenever you see the presence of illogical expressions, which means that on the left hand side you have 0 for 0, 0, but there is a value other than 0 on the right hand side. So this is the appearance for, a, in, for an illogical equations. And if you found out that there is an illogical equations in your system, you have you know that you will have no solution for this system of linear equations. So to wrap up, 
the two methods that we learned today, the first one is the degree of freedom. It's just a quick prediction what kind of solution you will have. And the Gaussian eliminations will determine, will give you an accurate answer whether it should be a one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions.